What was that? I don't know. That was a footprint. Right outside the tent. Someone just stepped outside the tent. The skeptics debunk, saying there isn't the space for these things. There's the space, but that doesn't make it a reality. There's the food, and we've seen that, those animals. That doesn't make it a reality. What we need to find are footprints. We need to find hair. We need to find footage, if we could get something like that. And that's a very hard thing to do. You have to assume that if a creature has remained undiscovered all this time, then it's going to be pretty adept at keeping out of our way. And one thing all rare creatures have in common is that they're really seen. So Carrie, are you excited to go and explore these creepy woods? Yeah, can't wait. It's going to be good. It is. I think we should go to a, a different place though, the same area but... A head a bit further in. Yeah. Yeah, I think so as well. Because we've camped in this bit like for the last two times now. Three? Yeah, three times. So if we just move further along, I reckon we are it look a lot different on video as well, it'd be nice. Hi guys, welcome back to the 401 Files. Um, I'm out again tonight at a place that I've brought you guys many times before. Um, this is the North Yorkshire Moors. Me and Carrie have decided to come out. It's kind of a last minute camp and uh, we're just going to spend the night here. Thought we'd do some filming because it is always a place, like I said, that has a lot of reports coming from it. So whenever I come here, I like to bring the camera just in case. So this is going to be a really candid, casual, laid back kind of um, video, but one that I'm sure you'll all enjoy. So stay tuned. So that's Carrie just up ahead. She's obviously out filming today as well for her channel, which is UK Carrie Outdoors. So if anybody or any of you guys want to go over there and say hi, then go do that. Go show your support. She likes to do a lot of wild camping, so her videos are all about getting out to these beautiful locations. And um, she likes cooking as well, so if that's your kind of thing, head over to Carrie's channel and show your support. I'll leave a link down below. Um, yeah, for me, it's great getting out with people. Um, a lot of these videos I've done in the past on my own, as you're all aware. I've done a lot of solo camps and they're great. But it's always nice when you can get out with someone like Carrie or Junior. Um, because you can use them as keys to unlock doors that you probably never would have thought of. Once you start bouncing off these like-minded people that share the same beliefs or the same thoughts, it's interesting what comes out in conversations because I've learned a hell of a lot from talking to people like Junior. Um, Junior's got a very different way of looking at things. Sometimes Junior's way of looking at things is completely different to mine and, and sometimes I have to pinch myself to think whether he's being serious or not. But I love that because I have learned a lot from him and it's opened my eyes to not be so stubborn, to accept different points of view. And no matter how wacky sometimes things sound, there might be some truth behind it. So Junior is always one of those people that um, enlightens me with weird and wacky ways of thinking about things. So yeah, being out with Carrie again, I'm going to pick her brains tonight on what she thinks about the extraterrestrial phenomenon, the UFO phenomenon, and uh, we'll go from there. But it's absolutely amazing, like I said. I am hoping as well, just while we're talking about getting out with other people, to make a trip to Canada, believe it or not. That's in the pipeline. I've spoke to Justin from Mountain Beast Mysteries. I know a lot of you here do like Justin's videos, me included, big fan. And um, so the plan is for me to get out there and maybe go on a few Bigfoot expeditions with Justin. That definitely won't happen this year, but maybe later on next year, if I start saving my ass off, we can pull together and make that happen. Because that would be truly incredible. So whenever I'm out, I love doing this. And I, I don't know why, but it gives me a really weird feeling. Um, but I look at the trees and I look at the moss that's growing on the trees. And I think to myself about why it's green and 
why the trees go through different changes during the seasons and I look at all these different things that are happening around me and I think I'm on a planet that's going through space at thousands of thousands of miles an hour. This planet is possibly not much different to millions more out there. Just because we haven't discovered those yet doesn't mean that there isn't planets out there and it makes me fascinated to think about what a forest on another planet might be like. Like, I'm walking through here now and like I've said, this is just a planet flying through space. That blows my mind. I could potentially be on another planet and it'd be no different or very vastly different. The possibilities are endless, but to think that I'm flying through space right now and I am an alien to another alien is mind blowing. Life here on Earth at present started about 3.5 billion years ago. And in the grand scheme of things, that's not a very, very long time at all. But the biggest question that's left unanswered is, where did that life start? We still don't know the answer to that. Did life begin 3.5 billion years ago here on Earth? Or somewhere out there in the cosmos? These thoughts completely keep me awake at night. Unbelievable. So I've decided to um, bring my phone out tonight and I've downloaded a few things on Netflix which I've only recently learned you can do. Maybe not the best idea because one of the things I've chose to download was The Curse of Chucky. Maybe not a great idea when you're out camping in the woods. So yeah, that should be interesting. I don't think I'll get any of it watched to be honest because my mind is so focused now on making these videos. I'm just tuned in and I want to chat to you guys throughout the night as much as I can and uh, yeah, get some filming done. Wow, take a look at this. Fleur, Gimbal, and Go Fast. Those are the titles of three unclassified Navy videos that have been in the hands of the Defense Department for years, but just now have been released. In the videos, objects that are still not identified. In fact, the DOD said in a quote... So I had this um, very interesting conversation with somebody on Facebook only last week. And the gentleman that I was talking to was trying to convince me that the land mass here in the UK just isn't big enough to sustain a creature like a Bigfoot or a wild man or whatever these cryptids are. He was trying to say that the food supply isn't here, it's not big enough, and that these things don't exist, it's impossible. And I must admit, I've had these thoughts myself. I'm out here a hell of a lot filming, and from time to time it does cross my mind maybe there is nothing to this. I've never found anything that I can't explain away as of yet. But then I had to pinch myself because that is a very arrogant way for me to start thinking and for this gentleman to start thinking as well because we are just individuals. Like I'm just one person out here with a camera and my opinion or beliefs on what hundreds of people are seeing really stands for nothing. Because like I said, I am just one person. There are literally hundreds and hundreds of reports coming in from hundreds of different people, all from different backgrounds. These are all tinfoil hat wearing crazies. Some of these are very respectable people. Some of them are trained observers and yet they leave scratching their heads about what they saw. So my opinion is irrelevant on what I believe. As long as these reports keep coming forward, I will continue to get out here with my camera and try and find out what's going on. I think also the very recent findings that there are planets all over the place out there. We used to think uh, there may be a few other planets, as many as 8,000 in the galaxy. Now the best work based on the Kepler satellite is that there are between 1 and 1 1.6 planets per star in the galaxy which implies within a mere hundred light years at least between 10,000 and 16,000. So suddenly we think space is loaded with planets and that some of them have life on it and that helps account for all the reports we have of them coming here. Uh, clearly there are more places than ours that have life. Now I should add 
From an alien viewpoint, it seems quite clear that we are a primitive society whose major activity is tribal warfare. We would be of concern to the aliens. Let's not forget that we killed 50 million of our own kind in World War II. We destroyed 1,700 cities. Everybody out there would not want us to go out there. So recently I made a post on Facebook and it was of an old picture that somebody had posted and basically in this picture they were trying to pass it off as a Bigfoot. But really all it was was one of these, a upturned root ball. And for me, being out in the woods quite as often as I am, you see these things all the time and it's common knowledge what these are. I mean, don't get me wrong, sometimes when you're walking through the trees, you might catch a glimpse of one in the corner of your eye and it can throw you a little bit because the shape is different. And that the way our eyes work is we're always looking to make sense of things, our surroundings. We're always looking for patterns that we're familiar with, people's faces, eyes and nose and everything else. That's how our brain works. We look for patterns. And this is why we see pictures of um, clowns or dogs and cats in clouds because our brain wants to make sense of our surroundings. And so what happens is when you walk through the woods, we know that all the trees go vertically up from the ground and maybe one or two that have fallen over, but that's basically the, the layout of most forests and woods. And so when you see something like this in the corner of your eye, it can throw you because the shape is completely different to everything else that's in front of us. And so straight away our brain thinks person, Bigfoot. We try to make the shapes up into something that we're more familiar with. But really all it is, is just an upturned tree. And this is the root ball at the other end. But yeah, people were still swearing by it being a Bigfoot. And I just wanted to make it clear that, in my own opinion, it wasn't a Bigfoot. It was an upturned root ball, just like this. The only thing different about the picture was the person who took it was obviously being sneaky because they didn't actually um, put this in the picture, the actual trunk itself. They just shot this bit. I will attach that photo, you guys can make your own mind up, but for me, it's pretty conclusive that that's what it was. Everything's been blown down, so I can't really see a clear view through. But about five minutes ago, I thought I heard a dog barking, and um, I just hope that there's nobody out here. Like I said, one of my biggest fears when I'm doing these things is poachers. So I hope there's no one out here with a dog off the lead because that'd be quite scary. Especially when I'm laid on the floor doing like filming and stuff, like I don't want to stand up and startle a dog that's sniffing around because dogs can be quite skitty and I don't want to be getting bit. <laughs> but it just sounds like someone walking, walking through some of this thick brush in front of me, but I can't see anybody, nobody's appeared yet. probably best tell Carrie just because if she's behind me filming as well this person might be walking around the outside of this wood and she might um, bump into them so but I don't actually know if it's a person yet this is the thing I can just hear somebody I was filming on the floor and I heard something off to my left which definitely sounded like somebody walking through <laughs> I keep thinking I hear people talk as well. It's one of them, innit? Do I walk forward and try and make contact with this person so they're aware that I'm here? Or do I just try and stay hidden and risk them stumbling across me? And, you know what I mean? I, this It's a tricky one. I am wearing a bright blue jumper so it shouldn't be too hard to spot me from a distance but like I said this is quite thick in front of me um, I definitely can't see more than 30-40 metres ahead maybe it's the wind as well you've got to be I've got to be careful because there is a lot of trees swaying around it is quite windy but it definitely sounded like I heard a dog bark and then about five ten minutes later I heard somebody walking like pushing through um, some of this overgrown stuff in front of me. So this is what's off in front of me. 
Um, you can see it's very obstructed. I can't really see a clear view through. But that's where I heard something or somebody walking past just beyond this stuff here, like walking. Um, walking off that way. I can't hear it again. I've not heard anything since I last made that last bit of video, but... Um, Hang on one second because I think I can hear it again over this way this time. Let me go. It's always a worry of mine. I don't know why it is. I think I saw this video one time on YouTube where some guy was camping, he was wild camping in his hammock and uh, through the night he heard wild po um, illegal poachers pushing right past where he was swinging in the trees and that must have been a scary, well it was scary, it terrified him so I think after watching that it's always made me really on edge about other people being out here with me uh, maybe with shotguns like I've said or dogs I'm not sure, I've not heard it again. Um, I've definitely heard something though, I know that much. But uh, yeah, I haven't heard it since. So I don't know, I don't know what that was or if it was anything at all. So, let me ask you some questions. Dun, dun. <laughs> what is your thoughts on people seeing extraterrestrials or UFOs? Like, it'd be really silly to believe that out of all the billions of planets, we're the only ones with life. Mm. So, not... so, do you actually think that they're, it's possible that they could be visiting Earth or already here on Earth? Well, humans have only been around for a, a relatively short period of time, and we're all visiting from the places we're talking about colonising. Mars. Mm. If we can order do that, what can they do? They yeah, it's like I was saying to you one about this conversation I had with someone, and um, they was basically saying about how would it be possible for them to traverse like massive distances through space. But I think what people don't understand is that even if they're a thousand years older than us, That's it huge. would it would be like child's play to them, wouldn't it? Because if you if you look at what we've achieved in the last hundred years, massive. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And so you add another thousand years onto humans. We'll be able to do so much more. Yeah, like... If we can uh, already, in such a small amount of time, travel into... explore our little bit of space. Yeah, exactly, like to Mars and yeah. these other planets. But, like, a thousand years as well is being generous, because they could be a million years older. Oh. They could be a billion years older, because the universe is like 14 point something billion years old. If you think it's 14 point whatever something billion, billion years yeah. old, and we've like... We're only five point something billion, so... There's Humans have only been around for like five time. points, yeah. yeah. So like, but what we've achieved already, it would be really um, arrogant to believe we're the only only intelligent life. Yeah, exactly. And like when I have that conversation with people, they always do say that same thing. Is like, well, how would they be able to travel from star system to star system? But, but at one point, humans used to say to each other, "How are we going to travel from here to America?" Exactly. And now we have planes that can get us there in like four hours. That's right. And at one point. There was humans walking the earth who didn't even know America existed. That's so crazy, isn't it? Yeah, so, I mean, we can get to the other side of the world. We can get to Mars. We can, you know. Mm. So, uh, do you think they would have reason to be interested in yeah, humans? Yeah, of course they'd be interested in humans, for loads of reasons. Yeah, I agree. Like, I, I mean, we're a species of animal. Just like other animals, we go to war with each other, we kill our own. 
we watch other members of our race die in a hunger and you know we have leaders and we have things we have money all these yeah, things yeah it's so like, bizarre when you think about we it have a society built on rich and poor and joe rogan said it best like i was listening to one of his podcasts he was saying that people say why would they come all this way and show interest in humans would be so like far below their radar it doesn't make sense but Joe Rogan said, well, actually, we've got humans that travel to the other side of the world to study butterflies. Yeah, exactly. Or maybe there's something here that they need that we just take for granted. So, like, a lot of these UFOs are, are spotted in wooded areas or forests. Yeah. For all we know, like, trees could be gold dust to them. They Do might you know I mean? also think it's really weird how trees provide us with oxygen, yet we cut them all down. We've even said ourselves now when we want to go camping found it really hard to find a big patch of woodland yeah definitely whereas England used to be covered in forests mm. it's not anymore but we need those trees to survive that to me if I saw an animal that needs them to survive but they were destroying it I think oh, why would yeah. they do that a lot of these abduction cases people come back these abductees come back and they claim that they've seen other humans that are in some kind of like a trance like state on the craft with them so does this mean like they're picking up multiple people, they're not just abducting individual people as they go? Maybe they're picking up multiple people in one night. Well I think if they've got a chance of being seen, they're not just going to come take one and come back for another. Mm. Gonna... Yeah that makes sense. Yeah. You might as well do it properly if you're going to do it. Yeah, and they, they maybe need a range. And maybe the ones that are telling the story of their abduction are only the ones that remembered it. Maybe they might have been like 50 more people abducted that night. You don't. It's not, I w do you know what the worst part about it would be? Is coming back and not being believed. Knowing that you have this information and either the government trying to cover it up because they don't want it leaking or people thinking you're crazy. I hope at some point in our lifetime we get more answers. Like, I was just thinking there really quickly to myself. I wonder if when we do go to these other planets, if we come across another species that's way below us in terms of technology and advancements, do you think we'd ever abduct them? And then I started thinking, well actually, we, we already kind of do that. We go into the jungle, we take gorillas out, and um, we study yeah, gorillas. We study them, we study them. We, you know. We, like, we'll take mice and rats, and we'll, we'll do medical experiments on them. Yeah, put them in like mazes to solve puzzles, yeah. So in order to cure this ailment, we need to study a rat or a mouse to do that, to advance ourselves as humans. Not that I agree with that. How do you know they're not doing the same thing? We might have something they need. There's, bit, there's a massive chunk of time where there wasn't life as we know it no, yeah, totally different. so I don't believe during that time no other species passing by came and stopped or, 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 or was here to begin with we've said before maybe about our DNA coming from elsewhere as well haven't we possibly I was that. talking about this yesterday on Facebook um, did you see my post yesterday about the octopus yeah so I didn't know this until after I posted it but people were commenting down below saying that an octopus doesn't have any DNA relation to a human or life on earth I need to look into this because obviously this is just people's comments but yeah. a lot of people were saying it and they were saying that the DNA of an octopus they believe has come from somewhere else because there's nothing close to it. So as you can tell guys it's getting dark now there's not much light left at all. I've just put the last bits of the wood on the fire and then um, it's really cold as well tonight so I'm going to probably hit the hay quite early. I'm going to lie in the tent watch some videos on my phone and uh, touch base with you guys tomorrow. I've got a full day worth of filming tomorrow as well because I've got no reason to be heading off in a rush so I plan or I intend on making the most of it should be a quiet night it's been great to catch up with you guys and be back out in the places that I love um, and yeah so like I said just gonna chill out now and see the rest of this wood through okay guys so we've decided to come inside the tent now as you can hear the rain is coming down quite heavily and it just made no sense for us to be sat around a fire getting soaking wet through so we are inside the tent, I've checked the weather forecast and it is in for the rest of the night. But, like I said to you earlier, I have downloaded some videos on my phone to watch. And um, right about now it's all about chilling out. So, not much to report from here. I will check in with you guys in the morning. And hopefully we'll have a good night's sleep. And start again with the filming tomorrow. So you guys take it easy for now. And like I said, I'll see you in the morning. So... Not good, is it? No, I'm not sure what to say really because for me to be on edge. Yeah, exactly. That's saying something. Just listen.
I'm usually quite a rational you person. You have been loud. Am I? Yeah. What I'm talking... I don't... I, I feel on edge, really bad. I feel, I just don't know, like, I was just saying to Carrie there that because it is rainy and it is windy, there's lots of noises that you're not going to be familiar with because out of all the times we come camping, it doesn't rain and it's not windy every single time, so there's new noises for sure, but... I hear people talking. Yeah, it definitely sounds like... Every now and again, I keep hearing conversations happening around the wood. I don't, it's... And I'm like quite a rational person. I can kind of rationalise things. You know what's, what I'm finding weird, right? Is this? This is the only thing that's freaking me out right now. Is that it is windy and it's raining, right? Yeah. Mm. But when I, when we both lie there quietly with the lights off, I'll hear what I think's talking, and you'll say, "Did you hear that?" So you're hearing exactly what I'm hearing at the same time. Now, if it was wind. Surely. It's not wind though, it's actual conversation. It sounds different to wind, doesn't it? It yeah. sounds like... Wind, there's wind. This is actually... I, I can hear people chatting. I don't know what to suggest. Like, I'm, like I actually feel like... We've camped so many times. So many we? times. Like, you just said there, like... Carrie just said, I don't think I could do, like... Another solo wild camp if it was going to be like this. Yeah, I've never... And I, and I, and I, I said that even, even tonight on my own, if I was on my own tonight, I think I even had struggle because it has been really strange. Usually once I'm Even in, in the tent. day, earlier on, like, you, you guys will have seen earlier on in this video, like, when it was daytime, I mentioned then that I heard something, like, off in the woods and stuff, but now it's just a bit... Yeah. And I think, like, for me, normally once I'm in the tent, I'm in my sleeping bag all cosy and stuff. And we've lied and watched a film. I'm quite settled then. I can settle down. Um, I don't feel settled at all. I feel really on edge. I feel quite shaky. But now we've got a decision to make. We either just lie out here and probably not get no sleep, or we pack away in the rain and the wind. And then walk through the woods where we can hear people talking. And make that treacherous journey back in the dark to the car. What was that? I don't know. That was a footprint right outside the tent. Just what do you mean someone just stepped outside? Yeah, that's footprint I heard something but What do you want to do? What do you want to do? I thought I'm gonna be sick. You're not gonna be sick. I just feel My hands actually shaking. I just feel quite vulnerable. I've never felt like this ever. Ever, ever, ever. I've, I've done a million and one. I'm not joking. It's this honestly has put me off ever coming out ever again. No, don't be silly. No, it has. I've never felt like this ever. I normally love coming out. Obviously, tonight it's just been horrific. Even week. even going to the toilet, I felt like I was being watched. I said, you, I, I feel like I'm being watched. Yeah, I don't like this at all. At all. Not one side little So bit. what are we going to do? Pack down in the rain? I don't know. Decisions, decisions. If we stay here, we're definitely not getting no sleep. No. I know. If I get home, I'll feel safer and glad. Right? Mm. What I'm dreading... I don't know what's worse, staying here all night and listening to this, or packing down and being vulnerable and walking from here to the car, because it's a long walk. It is a long walk, but I'll have my torch on. Yeah. What I don't like is having the torch on in the tent when yeah. I can't see outside. Yeah. But yet people outside can see inside. Yeah. That's what I don't like. Yeah. I don't like the thought that we're doing this I've now. camped out, right? This is what, the only thing that's put me on edge right now is that I've camped out many, many, many times in rain, wind, sleet, snow. And I've never honestly heard what sounds like chattering, like conversation. Where there should be no conversation, there should be no reason for anybody to be out here. No one would settle. This is not. This is not. Definitely not. This is this is one of the places out of all the places I've been where I would guarantee you won't see anyone. Yeah. 
And if someone was out camping, we'd hear them continuously. But it's every now and again we just keep hearing these random voices. We'll put it this way. The last time we was both out together in the Lake District, we actually did have four guys camping down from us. Yeah. And we didn't hear them as much as what we've heard noises tonight. No, we didn't. No, we didn't. And, uh, it's not even that. I think it's the sense that something is wrong. Yeah, like and I've got a really. I have got a feeling. I felt it earlier on when I was filming, even in broad daylight. I think I mentioned it on camera that. Yeah, it doesn't feel right. It feels a bit something weird. Something doesn't sit right. And my gut instinct is telling me to hide. The wind and rain is definitely not helping. But we camped, when we were there last night in the Lake District, it was a lot worse than this. We were exposed to the side of a mountain and it was really, really, really bad. The tent was blown all over. And we were in a wood then. And it wasn't like this. It's like you saying, I've just got this horrible feeling. I don't know what it is. Like a sixth sense. Yeah. Not a sixth sense, I just feel really, really vulnerable. On edge. I feel, For no reason. I feel though. like my body's gone to fight off like. The only time I felt like this is when you tried to take me to that return church where you found those teeth. And we went back at night time to try and do another video. And I walked into the graveyard and, I, and we both said, we need to leave. And we ran back to the car and we put on the video. That's how I feel right now. Because the thing is, like, you've said it, if I lie here all night, I know I'm not going to sleep. Yeah, I think we should. I think we should get all the torches on and get, like... We're going to get absolutely drenched, you know that. I don't care. Um, yeah. I don't care. I thought I heard something in there. I'm getting my knife out of my kit. <laughs> right, guys, so the plan now is we're going to pack down and we're going to make our way out of this wood because if there's ever any kind of advice I would pass on to anybody while camping solo or whether you're with someone else, is always listen to your gut. And we've both said from the start of tonight's camp that things don't feel right. I've been on edge, even like in the daytime, so. Yeah. I can still hear stuff, me. I know, please can we just go? Because I can still hear it and it's making me look comfortable. I just want to get my boots on. And I f yeah. Right, we're going to pack down um, as quick as we can because it is raining really, really heavily. And then we've got the however many miles back to the car through the forest in the dark in a location that is renowned for wild men, UFO sightings, so... That's helping, that's helping. I know, I say that, right, but I've never had a bad experience here. I've made so many videos here talking about people that have, and in every one of those videos, I've always said that me personally, I haven't picked up anything here before, mm, ever. No. But, for, but tonight, of all nights for some reason... Yeah, let's go. Please. Yeah, let's, let's go, let's do this. Did you have to sleep back to work? No, not yet. So just walking out of here right now, not heard any more of these voices, which is quite strange and coincidental. But um, a lot of trees have come down, even since we first moved in tonight or earlier this evening. A lot, a lot of trees have come down. It's creepy it's as hell though, guys. Like this fog is not helping at all, is it? It's like Silent yeah, Hill. Yeah. But um, 
we're just going to make our way back to the car now and I've already mentioned in this video that when we did turn up there was another car parked there already which was quite a quite a shock because we never normally see anyone here so it'll be interesting to see if that car is still there because if so it could have been somebody else in this woods with us if not then I really don't know what what to suggest <laughs> it's been a bit of a peculiar night um, I feel like we've made the right decision now we've just got the dreaded task of trying to maneuver our way through this minefield of potholes and um, dead trees just lying all over the place so it might take us a while to get back but hopefully we'll get back as soon as we can and I'll check back in with you guys once we do get there Steady, go steady. <laughs> Oops. Did you not hear that one? I've heard three whistles. That was a very. No, that was it was different. This was like a very short sharp high pitch whistle like a I don't want to do it no I don't want to do it keep going around yeah no keep going around that way yeah is that all right now no no we don't go short no we do we bend round this way yeah yeah 100% So we've made it back to the car. The car that was parked behind us when we first arrived, if you remember, has gone. I'm not sure whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. Like, if the car's gone, then it wasn't obviously people playing a prank. So then it begs the question, what was we hearing? Was it the wind? I've camped out many times before in bad wind. It's never really sounded like people chattering to that extent. That was like a full-on conversation that I heard back there, so. Yeah, I was kind of hoping, to be honest, to see the car there. So I could put it down to people just being in the same woods as us, but um, it's not, so I'm not sure what we heard.